much for meeting with me this morning. I really greatly appreciate it. We've been, as an organisation, trying to look at, with the complexity of everything that's going on right now, we know that we've got this really powerful tool um, and yet, you know, we can't stand on our soapbox and experience sort of say we're amazing. So I'm really, really grateful for being able to pick your brains and, um, and be able to use that, particularly at this point right now where I think... You know, I won't, I won't lead the way, but are you okay if I kind of ask you a whole lot of questions? And Absolutely. That'd be beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. I don't know if, I, if I'll be able to answer them all, but, you know, I'll, I'll do my best, right? <laughs> we'll just play it by ear, shall we? Yeah. Um, so one of the questions I wanted to ask was, you know, you prioritise social-emotional learning during the first lockdown. What was your decision-making behind that? Probably our decision behind it was um, one of our whole school goals for this year anyway, it was to enhance the well-being of all of our students within the school. Um, but it's also, you know, enhance the well-being of our community. Um, and so that was like teachers, parents, um, and of course our students. So we were still following with our goal. Um, and then really we felt it was a necessity that if our children are going through this, um, this very challenging time in their life you know the best thing we could do was to support them at home and how could we do that and this was one layer that we could actually um, support their well-being at home um, you know to support our social emotional learning program we, we offered our school and we we're really lucky that you know Marissa um, she'd already shown me this program um, at the end of 2019 um, and so I'd already seen it. Um, and so, you know, the school um, had a look at it and felt, oh, probably we wouldn't go using the platform in 2020 um, because we really valued the face-to-face -face learning that we have at our school with the Health Healthy Skills for Life program. So unfortunately, we couldn't deliver that face-to-face. Um, -face. Um, so that's why we've actually really embraced this program um, and saw the benefits behind it. Beautiful. And so when you were assessing the programs, um, what stood out for you in terms of implementing this? We'll, we'll talk to the first lockdown, because there's kind of a few stages here. Yeah, so the first it. lockdown, how easy was it to implement and to roll out across your classes and your students? I think it, um, it was quite easy to roll out, it was. I think the reason with that is um, Marissa, she actually devoted a lot of time to us to really support our staff. Um, and so she um, was always available. Um, so she did, um, you know, Zoom sessions with us to run through the program um, and show um, the capabilities of the program and how we could cater for the needs of our students at different um, year levels. Um, and so with that, you know, that was just an overview. And from that, um, again, you know, she's amazing, Marissa. Um, mm -hmm. You know, she just offered um, support to year levels, um, setting up um, the courses, um, which would probably benefit um, that particular year level um, and sort of help them with their curriculum design. So, yeah, so, yeah, from the, um, the get-go, it was, yeah, just the support from um, Marissa that really helped us on our journey. Thank you for right. that. We do pride ourselves on having really exceptional, you know, support for the schools, whether it's a face-to-face -face or the professional learning or the on online programs. And I think also Matt too. I'm pretty sure his name's Matt. Yeah, so uh, Matt was really a great support as well um, and supported uh, Marissa and, and us as well. So it was both of them. Um, but we have a lot of contact with Marissa because she's based in Victoria um, and, you know, she's been to our school quite a numerous amount of times. So we've developed a very good relationship with her and, you know, our staff really love her actually. So um, they feel very comfortable working with her. Thank you. Yeah. And I, this is kind of, I suppose, aside from the platform, but, you know, I, I, I don't think there's a person at the moment who doesn't feel for every single person in Victoria right now. And I imagine implementing something new on top of all of the changes. How did your teachers cope with having to implement something, A, they hadn't used, hadn't seen, and they were brand new that first lockdown? Um, I, I think that... Um, I, I think... During this time, the first lockdown, um, I think staff just said, yes, well, we are moving to remote learning. And so we, we are going to have to learn new skills um, and implement new programs that we've never used before. And I think they, they straight away, they just jumped on it and said, okay, we've got to try and implement 
for example, um, Life Skills Go, um, um, to support our students. So um, I think that's with everything with remote learning, all our programs, um, you know, they had to learn how to use Google Classroom, um, you know, they had to use, you know, how to use the Google Suite. Um, so I think, you know, they were very um, keen to um, build their skills. Um, and then this is just another area that they felt they could build their skills. So I think what really helped is that um, we made sure that um, the person at each year level um, who was going to roll life skills go through the program um, was part of our wellbeing um, professional learning team. So they actually um, attended, um, everyone was invited to attend the meetings with uh, Marissa through Zoom, um, but we made sure that there was one particular person who was um, allocated as an admin role um, to actually support their teams um, in doing that. So, yeah. And what's really interesting for us is you had extremely high consistent usage during lockdown. When you transitioned back into the classroom, your usage remained as high. What do you think attributed to that? Um, so we, we felt that um, we've invested in the program and so we wanted to really keep going with that program and still support the wellbeing of our students. Um, you know, they came back to school, um, not for very long, but we really <laughs> wanted to just um, <laughs> to enhance that even further. Um, our big key was when they came back on site was to really focus on their health and wellbeing. Um, that was a key focus. Um, you know, forget about, um, you know, assessment, you know, those particular um, other um, core areas, um, our main focus was wellbeing um, for our students. And I think, you know, in this, you know, looming now, second lockdown, if you had advice for other schools that were implementing it, like I think you've done some really great things that we'll probably adopt as best practice. What would you say to other schools to really, from the get go, what would you say would be the best way to implement this? Um, I'd say really um, um, reach out for the support um, from who, whatever state you're in, you know, for example, like um, we're in Victoria, so you know, our support is um, Marissa. Um, seek that support because, um, you know, it's there. Um, you know, and um, for example, you know, Marissa is always available um, at any time to, to help anyone. Um, so one would be supports there to help you through the process of setting up your school um, or your classes. Um, the supports there to, to guide you through the resources um, and how to set up a unit of work um, is there. Um, our next step is to really... Um, this, this stage is really look at the reporting side of things. Yeah. So um, Marissa's got a um, professional learning session with um, these leaders on Thursday to actually go a little bit more in depth in the reporting side of things, because I think that's um, something that we could um, improve on um, utilising that um, part of the platform. Um, but yeah, first get the support, um, learn from each other. I think it's really important. So we had staff who really, were very competent in actually setting up their units. Um, they worked with, um, you know, across their teams, um, you know, vertically um, to support each other. Um, they had their wellbeing meetings. Um, they discussed the platform um, during that and what different year levels were doing. I think also Marissa, she actually um, said, you know, to start off with, you could actually um, select the units that are already there for you. Um, if they didn't work for you, um, you, know, you could design your own units of work. Um, so with the teams that wanted to design their own units of work, the support was there from her. Um, she was there to actually guide them through that process um, and they could set them up. So, yeah, I think the main thing to, that really helped us was that amazing support. Yeah, beautiful. And I think that, you know, speaking to that reporting, particularly transitioning into lockdown, out of lockdown, one of the things that it does do is it reports not only on the understanding of the students, but also the curriculum outcomes that have been taught and logging and matching them against your scope and sequence, as well as being able to monitor their mental well-being and how they are. So we're very much looking forward to that. And you've, your school has definitely been helpful in rolling out the next level of reporting, which we've just released. So we're really excited about that. Yeah. Um, what do you, did you speak to any of the students about the platform? Did you get any feedback from students or parents? Yeah, so what really came through was um, on the, um, the students, we had to do a, um, a mid-semester report. Um, and in that mid-semester report, um, 
the students have to have a comment how they've gone throughout the semester. Um, you know, within that, they've gone how they've progressed with their learning and things, things that they've really enjoyed doing. Um, one of the things that resonated very clearly was that they actually really enjoyed um, healthy skills for life, they call it, um, but they really enjoyed the Life Skills Go program um, when they were actually um, working from home remotely. Um, so, you no, know, with that, that was a lot of the feedback that came through. So, when the um, kids came back to school, um, I also went and spoke to the children. How did you find the platform? Did you enjoy it? Yes, you know, there were very different comments regarding, you know, someone saying, I really like the videos. Um, I love those. I really enjoyed the games that they had on offered. I like the, the mindful techniques they introduced us to. Um, I was able to use them at home. Um, these things came through in their reports. Um, also, um, some year levels, they do a, a, a gem journal. They do this reflect journal um, so when they were at, um, during remote learning you know, they do a reflective journal at the end of the week and inside that you know they'd be saying that oh, you know I practice these mindful techniques on this particular day you know to help me get through the week so um, yeah um, the life school goes program was able to reinforce things at home and then kids were able to use those things they actually learned um, to actually practice mindfulness um, you know within their own home and with their, their siblings and their parents, so which was really good. Some children actually said, you know, I practice mindfulness with my mum and my dad, oh. you know, so, you know, oh. yeah, so, you know, and I was able to get this by reading these journals. Um, so the feedback was um, fantastic. Beautiful. Thank you. And I suppose, you know, and you, again, you don't have to answer this question, but I think, you know, as a country at the moment, we're all looking to you to look at how we can support our young people you know, what would you be prioritising right now for every single one of our young people and our parents at the moment? Uh, um, yeah, I'd be really looking at their mental health. Um, that's really, really important, you know. Um, just really making sure that um, we just, um, we actually reach out um, and if parents need support. Um, you know, at our school, we actually have, um, we actually have a learning, we actually have a, um, a learning hub, um, so like a remote learning hub there. Um, within that learning hub, we have a, a section dedicated to wellbeing. Um, so within there, we've got different um, things there that um, support things for, for students and for parents. Um, you know, they've got you know, um, kids helpline in there, you know, we've got all these other areas. Um, so really what we've actually asked our staff to do is to really make sure that um, those children you think are at risk or are vulnerable, um, that you make sure that you actually even give that, you know, that Zoom session, you know, with a group, small group of those children or give the parents a call. How's things going at home? Um, can we support you with anything? Um, you know, with those vulnerable children, you know, that are working from home, we even um, offer to our parents that um, would you like to send them on site and we can support them on site um, if that's going to support you. So, yeah, I think that's really important at the moment, just giving that support to our families and their well-being. Absolutely. And I hope that you're taking really good care of yourself too. You're doing an amazing job of life. <laughs> yeah, I'm working from home today. Um, I have actually had five meetings today. Oh, so it's only, it's only 2 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I know. Um, but yeah, I'm working from home. So um, I'll, I'll, I'm going to work Thursday, Friday this week. Then next week I'll do Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Um, so we actually, um, we're sharing the load with our leadership team, um, which is really good. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, you know, I've got my office set up. So um, actually, well, I'm actually very productive at home. So I actually work longer hours, but oh, no. I make sure <laughs> that I go for my walk um, every day. Um, unfortunately, now it's only an hour, um, where before I was going for like a two hour walk. Now it's just going to be an hour. That's all we can do in Victoria at the moment. Beautiful. And just in closing, if you were speaking to a school who hasn't implemented a program like this, what would you say to them? Oh, geez. I said, um, what would I actually say to them? I said, oh, well, if you really want to enhance the well-being of your students, you know, it's a must mm -hmm. that you actually implement Life Skills Go platform um, at your school. Um, you know, it's great to support the health and well-being of your students, support your social and emotional learning program. Um, it's important to um, really um, build that resilience in your students as well. Um, 
and get them to really practice those um, particular skills, you know, like empathy, which is really important, you know, um, self-awareness, self-regulation. Um, so, yeah, definitely, um, yeah, 100% would actually back this program um, for any school that's um, interested in him actually signing up. Thank you so much, Eric. And, and please let us know how we can continue to support you, particularly, you know, your community is amazing. Your leadership is incredible. And Marissa and Matt have spoken really, really highly. So please reach out. Like we are, yeah. because we're not all <laughs> running around the country doing a million things, we are all really available at the moment. Yeah, that's it, um, you know. You know, and I yeah. think now more than ever, I can honestly look you in the eye and say, you know, this is kind of what we've been practicing for for 23 years. So, you know, yeah. supporting community.